Welcome to this episode of the Gunman. This video I'll be taking you through the respray on this Hyundai i30. So it's a full repaint. We're painting the bumper bars and the whole car apart from the roof. That's the only thing we're not painting on this job. So as you can see the prep work was done. I've then got it in the booth, mastered it all up. Next up I'll be grabbing the prep sole or the wax and grease removing solvent a couple of clean rags, wiping it over, and then I use a spray gun at the same time as a tack rag, wiped it all over to get rid of the, the dust. So I did that about three times on a job like this, just to make sure there's no bits of dust left. So I decided to leave the prep work out on this one because as it turned out, uh, the other painter was given this job initially on the Friday and the boss needed it painted on the Saturday, which is the day I painted it. So I, I only half finished off uh, half of the prep work on this job, so I couldn't actually end up videoing it. So I've got a couple of other vids that I've done with prep work. Um, one I uploaded recently was uh, quite well edited and it explains it quite well. I did it on a XF Jaguar, so it takes you right through all the dry sanding. But basically all you do is you block it down over your primed areas where the repairs were and then you go over all of that to uh, take it down through the grades to up to about 600 grit so it's uh, fine enough to spray over. And so on this first coat of base coat we're just spraying it over our primed patches everywhere that you need to get coverage so the parts that are already grey they obviously um, don't really need uh, the first coat of base coat but the second and third I'll put a coat over the whole thing. So I've, I've colour matched it. Um, it is not quite a respray, as I said, we're, we're not doing the roof. I ended up having to adjust the colour a, a little bit. If it was a full respray, usually the way you do it is just to um, just mix the colour up and you don't colour match it because the only area that it's going to match to is the inside of the door jams and you're better off having the colour off the machine. So first coat, just go around, put it over the patches. Um, I'm using solvent base and it's 25 degrees in the booth so by the time I've got back around, done the bumper bars, I've actually missed it. I, I skipped the footage out of the bumper bars to stop the video from getting too long but um, yeah, I'll just, uh, I'll put one uh, coat of clear coat in of the bumper bars at the end if you're still interested in watching the vid. There's, uh, one coat at the end. So, um, yeah, so uh, temperature 25 degrees in the spray booth. Um, that's how I usually like to keep it. Um, obviously, if it's hotter than that, you can't really do much to cool them down. I've never seen a spray booth that, that cools cools down. Um, yeah, if, if you know of anything like that, just uh, I'm interested to hear stuff like that. If uh, you can um, leave comments and you can uh, post photos on my Facebook page of jobs that you've painted or any problems that you're having. I'm doing my best to answer any questions. So this is our second coat. We're going over the whole car this time, as you can see. So I'm using a GoPro with a head mount at this point. I decided to change it up just a little bit. Um, and I used the head mount for the base coat and whacked it onto the chest mount for the uh, clear coat so it gives you a bit of a different aspect, a bit of a different look at the car and how I'm spray, spray painting it. So Standox is a, the paint I'm using. I've then just used a fast reducer in the base coat because I've found um, if you use slow reducers um, it stays wet for too long and it increases the chance of having uh, fry ups and map up area or swell ups around uh, where your primer has gone or anywhere that you might have broken through the clear when you were sanding it down so I try not to um, use slow reducer um, if it's an extremely hot day and I was doing a respray like this maybe I would do something to try and slow it down because it can start boiling up um, where the overspray lands it will turn uh, extremely dry and you'll get dust all through it so in those conditions I might want to slow it down but so the gun I'm using is the Devilbus GTI Pro. I'm using the HVLP air cap on it for this job. 
and uh, the settings I'm using on that is to wind the fluid right out, fan right open, and approximately two bar of pressure. So, um, if there's any uh, young guys watching this, uh, and you might be interested in getting into this trade, um, I would highly recommend it personally. Um, I started when I was 17 and um, I'm glad that I did because you get a lot of job satisfaction out of stuff like this. You're dealing with finished products, you know, when, when you get to do a race around a car and it ends up leaving looking 10 times better than what it did when it came in, you can really get a, a kick out of that. So, um, we're actually in Australia, I don't know what it's like around the rest of the world, but in Australia we've got quite a um, skill, shorting in, in, skill shortage in this trade, um, which is actually driving the dollar higher because we're more uh, sought after because no one wants to really do it anymore. Um, my boss was only just telling me the other day that this year he hasn't even had any, not one young kid leaving school and coming in asking for an apprenticeship. So. Um, I don't really see why. The work isn't that hard. It's a little bit dirty, I guess, but there's people out there. You can. It doesn't have to be a bad job, and it's it's a really uh, rewarding job. Um, there is a few parts of it that are difficult, but um, it, yeah, I would I would highly recommend it to anyone who's um, interested in it. So as far as the actual paintwork goes on this. Um, you can see that the tailgate itself, compared to the quarter panels, there's a decent size gap there from where the, the tail lights sit. So I'm able to just start at the tailgate, walk my way around the whole car, and I'm not going to, where I come back to that the other side quarter panel, I'm not going to end up getting dry spray onto anything, so I'm not going to have to put any blending reducer over that. Um, there's different ways of going about spraying a respray. Um, I used to do it totally different than the way I do it now. I found the way that I'm doing it, uh, that I do them these days, is a little bit easier. So, if I was to do a respray like this, and I was doing the roof at the same time, um, you would paint. I used to paint the roof, do one quarter panel, and the boot lid, and then the other side quarter panel, and then come back around to where I did the quarter panel, do the two doors jump back over to the other side, do the other two doors, then come back to this side, do the guard or the fender, and then the bonnet, and then go back over and do the other fender. So I found that um, while that makes it so that not one spot is ever going to be too dry, so you, you're zigzagging your way around the car, I found that it's a lot more running around, and you're better off uh, if this was a full reef paint, and there was a spot where I would have got dry spray, which it turns out there's not in this one but you are better off just going around in a circle and then just getting a bit of blending reducer and put that in the gun once you finish clearing just puff that, just uh, spray a bit of that over the, the next panel that will melt in and worse comes to worse you might just have to give it a light buff back and um, it just makes painting a lot easier So um, and it's all up to you what, what you what feels better for you so as you can see here I'm not going to end up getting any uh, dry spray onto the tailgate but um, we used to do a lot of uh, hail damaged cars and we I used to work at a four wheel drive workshop so we get a lot of four wheel drives and different vehicles coming in so to do a hail damage repaint you're doing new bonnets, new roofs and they'd put new roof skins on and new tailgates and new boot lids and stuff like that. So what we used to do, we'd, we'd turn around, I'd do one a day and the other apprentice might do one in a day and a half. And the way we ended up doing that was to spray the inside of the bonnet at the same time as we're painting the roof. Um, because especially on the four wheel drives, there's no way that you're going to be able to paint the roof at the same time as the rest of the car because they're too high and you have to stand on the stands to get up there. So we'll do the bonnet and the roof and bake it out. Next day, put the, the bonnet back on the car and then all we'd have to do is a similar job to this, which is just the sides and the bonnet and boot lid. So that was uh, a good way of getting around those big jobs. Um, but every job's different, so you're going to have to find uh, the best way to do it. Just use a bit of um, initiative and 
ideas and yeah, nothing's right, nothing's wrong I guess. And it's just the finished product that we care about as long as we just get them all painted correctly. So um, here we go on with our clear coat and this is on the, the chest strap. Um, pretty similar settings to your base coat, um, two bar pressure. I like to have the fluid wound right out. Um, as it's starting to cool down now, I ended up uh, winding the fluid just in a touch and this is just the Hyundai, so I'm not going for absolute flat finishes on them. Um, the customer doesn't expect it to look like a show car, so there's no real need to make it look like, even though it is a respray. Um, all you need to do is just make it look how it did before it, it came in. They, yeah, they, they don't really mind. So. And as it turns out, it, it looks quite good anyway. So. Um, another uh, spray gun I actually asked my boss about. I don't know the name of it yet, but um, sorry, not my boss, my uh, Standox rep, the guy that comes in and delivers our paint. I asked him about um, uh, another spray gun just to do some demos and some reviews on. I was going to see if he could get me a uh, Supernova or something like that because I've never used them and I don't have any videos on that and he ended up telling me that there's a brand new NSI water coming out soon and that he's when he gets it in, which should be in a week or two, he's going to um, lend, uh, give it to me for a couple of days and I'll be able to do a couple of vids on that gun. So I'm looking forward to that and keep an eye out soon for those vids. They'll be uploaded as I get the time. So. As I say, first coat, you really don't need it on uh, too wet, you're not going for your ultra finish on your, on your first coat of clear. Just enough so that you, you've closed it up over the base coat so that you can't see through to any of the base coat. So, um, some of you guys probably looking at me saying, hey, I noticed when you uh, top your paint up, you're not using a paint filter. Well, I've actually got in-gun filters. Um, and if I was using uh, different paint other than Standox, I might use a, a paint strainer as, as well. But um, I've found that this this clear really doesn't have that much um, that much bits of uh, shit or dust, sorry, that comes through it. Like they don't have big uh, lumps of anything. So um, and if there is anything small, then that in gun filter will will, uh, will clean it. Uh, will catch it before it comes out of the spray gun. So. Just try to do your, um, your, your pop-ups as quick as possible, obviously, more especially in the hot weather, um, because you don't want it to start, the panel that you've just painted to start drying, and then that'll turn into dry spray. You've got a, a good minute of window before it'll start doing that. But. So, being a respray, I'm using medium hardener in my clear, and I've then gone 10% reducer. So obviously this is a long video, I mean you can't get a respray done in 10 minutes so um, this will be uh, by far my longest video so far, it's um, 23 minutes it comes up to at the end, um, uh, actually starting to run out of stuff to say so um, one other thing I was going to say is that I've actually been spray painting an aeroplane lately so um, uh, just on my, after hours of man finishing at work and going up, we've got a contract up at the airport with uh, a aviation company that does the fly and fly out workers around here. Um, need all their air, airplanes repainted. So um, yeah, it's totally different than automotive spray painting. Uh, basically, you've got a, a book which is the guidelines, and you must follow them pretty uh, pretty tightly, you know, they uh, they don't want us to jeopardise the safety of the aeroplane in, in, the, um, in the, the work that we're doing, so obviously there's a lot of people's lives at stake, and uh, basically on the rivets, um, if you sand them, well then they've got a little point on the rivet, it's only small, if you sand a rivet, bang, it's got to be pulled out and re-riveted, and um, yeah, I've, ta I've taken a few photos of that um, that job, so I might do a bit of a slideshow and then um, make a little bit of a video out of that as well. So
soon. Um, I'm not actually allowed to video up there. Um, I've been a little bit sneaky taking photos actually, but I'm just a contractor, so I don't have to sign anything to say I'm not allowed to. So, um, yeah, I'll get that up when I can. It's um, it's totally different, as I said. Like the the paint is um, heat resistant and uh, cold resistant because uh, up there, obviously, in the air it gets really cold, and they also need to be heat resistant as well. So takes a really long time to dry whereas with this job here all I did was put my first coat on ended up that I had to go outside mix up a bit more clear and then that was right to go on with my second coat so, um, yeah so this is our second coat now we're, we're going a little bit um, a little bit slower with the spray gun than our first coat um, obviously because you want to get this this is your finished coat Two coats of clear is all you ever need with two packs. Um, don't need to put any more on than that. Um, if you were using acrylic or something like that, I think they used to put on up to six coats, even more sometimes if they really wanted a lot to cut into. Um, but the idea of two pack is that you get it off the gun, you get your gloss off the gun, and you don't have to polish it if, as long as you don't get any bits of dust landing in it, which you always do. Um, depending on the workshop you're working in, um, uh, this place here is um, a pretty good workshop. It's got nice paint spray boots, as you can see. We clean them out every couple of weeks, so most of the time we don't get much. You might have one or two bits in the panel. Um, but obviously, if you're trying to do, I would not recommend doing a respray in your backyard. I'd, I mean, uh, even in your garage, sorry. Um, uh, you know, um, there's lots of uh, companies that hire out spray boots. Um, and I'd probably do like two panels, like uh, two doors or something like that. You might do a side, you know, um, but I wouldn't recommend doing a job of this size um, in your garage. It's not going to come out. You know, I, I would probably even struggle to have a job like this come out nice. Um, way too much overspray in the in the air. You're going to get heaps of dust in it. And there's too many things that can go wrong. So. Um, yeah, so you'd do a small job, um, and another thing is that your compressor would really struggle to keep up with the, the air, unless you've got a decent sized compressor, which most people don't have at home, um, uh, that's another thing to think of before you go out and start deciding that you want to start sanding your car down in your backyard and doing a repaint, um, just make sure you've got all the tools and materials and you know how, um, to do it before you go ahead and do stuff like that. So you can see we're painting up this uh, up this pillar pillar now. I personally like to start down the bottom um, and then work my way up on the panels that I paint. Um, there's no, it doesn't really matter. You can start from the top and work your way down. Um, it's, I find it easier to, to watch the paint go on and that's how I was taught when I started spray painting. Um, but if you want to start from the top, go for it. It doesn't really matter as long as you get the, the nice finish. So, this, this job's just about coming up to an end soon. Um, a couple more minutes, as I said, we'll... Um, I'll include the footage of the bumper bars just for this last coat. I, I left the base coat out and the first coat of clear out just to stop the video from getting too long. But um, yeah, I think the footage ended up coming up pretty good this time. I've made some adjustments on the, the mounts, on the GoPro mounts. Um, the first couple of videos were actually couldn't even use the footage because uh, it wasn't aimed in the correct uh, spot. But I think that's an improvement on that. So I think it's a good good look at uh, spray painting too, rather than just a tripod. It was actually one of my subscribers. He he had the idea, and I reckon it's going real good so far. So I'm going to keep it up. Let us know your thoughts on the point of view. Obviously, if you're still watching this kind of stuff, interests you. Um, obviously, it interests me. I spend so much time editing these videos up and making the videos. So. Um, yeah, I love this job. Um, at the end here, we've also got a couple of other, um, a couple of other clips of a couple of my other 
uh, jobs that I've done, you click on those links. Um, we've also got some footage of the car once it's um, being buffed up. Just uh, just a quick quick look at the car when they're it's in the detailing bay and the boys are buffing it up. We've also got some footage of it in the morning sun and just another one of it when it's out the front when it's there picked up. So. Bumper bars, uh, they can be tricky to paint actually, so if you're new to it, you might even help just to line the fluid in an extra half a turn or something like that, because um, there's so many different edges and corners, um, you can get uh, runs quite easily on them, just in, inside all these tricky edges and the vents and all that kind of stuff, so um, you just feather the trigger on for those kind of things and just move nice and quick better off to have it. It's, it's easier to cut a bit of dry spray out than to cut runs out so you're probably better off leaving them dry if you um, just a tad dry obviously you don't want them so that the rags are going to start sticking to them that are that dry but yeah just leave them a touch dry rather than getting runs in it. Going for a bumper bar as long as you fix all the stone chips I like to do that on my prep work. I always like to fix the stone chips when I can and fix any scratches and that for the customer so they pick their car up and make sure that we've gone the extra extra yard to make their car look nice for them so here's a quick run around the car when it's all done pretty happy with the, the finish on it it held a nice gloss too we didn't do the door handles because they're black they're not painted so otherwise on a respray I would usually do the door handles and any mouldings door moulds stuff like that but this job didn't this car doesn't have them so titanium grey Hyundai i30 respray here we go we've got a quick look at the orange peel there Nice and flat. The owner should be wrapped with their car now. And quick look at the car. Here we've got it in the detailing bay. This is at the point when they're polishing it up. They've finished assembling it. Got a couple more things to put in. After that, they've all given it a good wash up. And this is out in the sun. All finished off. Colour looks good, nice and shiny. I'd be happy if it was my car, so. So check us out on Facebook. There's a link in the comments box down there. If you haven't already, leave a comment, tell us what you think, share your thoughts. Um, and thanks again for watching, and this has been another Gunman production. Goodbye.